Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. And you're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. The search and rescue operation for victims of the landslide at the construction site of an affordable housing project at Lengkok Lumba Permai, Tanjung Bunga, Pulau Pinang, was resumed at 8 a.m. today. So far, six bodies have been found, while five others are still missing. The SAR operation, which began at 9.10 a.m. yesterday, was halted about 8 p.m. after three bodies were found. The bodies were those of Bangladeshi nationals, Hussein and Yunus, which were recovered at 9.55 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. respectively. And the third was that of Myanmar national, Elias, which was found at 1.10 p.m. yesterday. The fourth and fifth body, identified as those of Indonesians, Hosrin and Erwin, were recovered at 11.31 p.m. yesterday and 2.45 a.m. today, respectively. The sixth body was recovered at 3.59 a.m. today, but its identity has yet to be ascertained. The landslide occurred at about 9 a.m. yesterday with 14 people feared to be buried. Meanwhile, the public, particularly the residents in the surrounding areas, have been advised to stay away from the site. Assistant Director General of Operations and Rescue at Wingalan Teruki said the structure of the land is unstable and the area has been declared as unsafe. Nasihatkan sedikit supaya jangan menghampiri kuasa ni ya, sebab kuasa ni tak selamat. Eh? So kita berharap bagi kerjasama supaya operasi menyelamat ni dapat dijalankan dengan baik tanpa ada gangguan lah. The SAR team comprised 150 personnel and members of the police, fire and rescue department, Malaysian Civil Defence Force, Special Malaysia Disaster Assistance and Rescue Team, SMART, K9 Unit, Pulau Pinang Hospital, Pulau Pinang City Council, People's Volunteer Corps or RELA, and non-governmental organisations. Natural Resources and Environment Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Wan Junaidi Tonku Jaffa said the close proximity between the construction project in Tanjung Bunga and the hill slope has been cited as the main cause of the landslide. He pointed out that the site of the project and the hill slope is just a mere 500 meters. Jadi wala bagaimanapun saya dah mengantar semua pihak jabatan uh, mineral dan geosain ke tapak tu daripada polis dan juga daripada kedah untuk pergi ke situ untuk melihat sendiri dan memberi laporan sepenuhnya apa yang sebenarnya berlaku tapi pada secara ringkasnya saya lihat memang ada kelemahan daripada pengurusan adalah kelemahan daripada sud uh, uh, pembinaan di situ berhubung dengan uh, cerun bukit khususnya Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Junaidi added that the project had received approval from the authorities. However, several aspects of the project had contravened several guidelines. As an example, he said works at the hill slope was not managed well by the developer, adding that it would not pose any problems during dry days, but it becomes unstable when it rains. A section of Mount Kinabalu collapsed yesterday due to continuous rains and strong winds. Now, however, the 5 p.m. incident did not cause any damage or injuries as it occurred about 1.5 kilometers from the nearest building. The collapsed section comprising soil and boulders had fallen near Sungai Masilo 2, Kampung Masilo in Kundasang. The location is close to an old resort, Masilau Nature Resort, near the Taman Kinabalu Masilau Station, which had been shut down after it was damaged in the Mount Kinabalu quake on June 5, 2015. Sabah Civil Defence Department Acting Director Lieutenant Colonel Muhammad Izaimi Muhammad Dawood said several officers were sent to the scene to assess the damage and speak with villagers after receiving an alert at about 5.45 p.m. He said from what they observed so far, everything is under control. The river flow is normal and he urged all villagers not to panic. Lieutenant Colonel Mama Izami said they were monitoring the situation. The head of the prosecution division in the Attorney General's chambers is leading the special task force set up to investigate the allegations against Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC Chief, Dan Sri Zulkifli Ahmad, of having an affair with a woman in Bali, Indonesia, recently. Without mentioning the individuals involved, Attorney General Tan Sri Muhammad Apandi Ali said the team comprised top officials and were leading all investigations. Jadi, saya fikirkan task force itu perlu kerana tomohan dan laporan polis itu melibatkan soal integriti. Integriti seorang yang mengetuai badan 
apa tu pencegah rasuah yang mana memerlukan suatu integriti dan standard moral yang tinggi. That's Rima Madapandi said this when met by reporters after receiving an honorary Doctor of Law degree in conjunction with the ninth convocation ceremony of University Sultan Zainal Abidin or UNIZA in Kuala Nuru, Stringano. Now, the group of eight developing Islamic countries, or D8 summit meeting, which concluded on Friday, saw its member states reiterate their commitment to strengthening their economic development cooperation within the caucus. Also, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan also proposed a fresh perspective towards obtaining the agreement of all the D8 members. And we have also prepared to ensure that the Sebulan suara tidak lagi digunakan pakai tetapi cukup uh, sekadar untuk uh, persetujuan itu diasaskan kepada suara majoriti. Ini merupakan satu pendekatan yang baru dan pada emas saya, Wisma Putra akan meliti, meneliti sepenuhnya cadangan-cadangan itu. Meanwhile, Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said Erdogan also officially stated the commitment to help the Rohingya refugees and urge other Islamic nations to follow in Malaysia's footsteps to help resolve the Rohingya crisis. Malaysia would also scrutinize a proposal by Turkey to increase the composition of the D8 membership to 20 countries to allow other nations to also participate in the economic and commercial cooperation network. A woman was killed when she was flung out of her car and her husband is critically injured in an accident along kilometer 13 Jalan Dungun heading towards Bukit Besi near Kampung Serdang, Trengganu yesterday. In the 3.15 p.m. incident, the couple's car rammed into an oncoming four-wheel drive and turned turtle when making a turn into a lane. Jaria Yaakob, 68, who sustained serious injuries to her head and body, died while receiving emergency treatment at Hospital Dungun, whereas her husband, Abdul Mubin Muhammad, 78, is in critical condition. Dungun Fire and Rescue Chief, 2nd Senior Officer 2, Osman Sembok, said a five-man team rushed to the location and took five minutes to remove the driver who was pinned to his seat. When contacted, Dungun Police Chief Superintendent Ahmad Zailani Yaakob said the case is being investigated under Section 14, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. And that concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, three more Tanjung Bunga landslide victims found. Join us again at 7 p.m. for more updates on the latest happenings around the world. Thank you. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned to TV2.